Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today we are trying another one of those Romance languages that perhaps many people haven't heard of and that is the Romance language. We're gonna see if as a native Italian speaker I can understand much of it because of the fact that we all belong to the same language family, the Romance language family. So where is Romance spoken? Well Romance is spoken in a few areas, very small linguistic minorities in northern Italy, but generally speaking in one of the cantons in Switzerland. And even though normally when you think about the official languages spoken in Switzerland, so German, French and Italian, those are the ones that you normally come to your mind, but uh, Romance is one of these languages. But the reason why you might have not heard of it is because it only has 40,000 native speakers, so linguistically speaking it's definitely an endangered language. But where does it come from? Well, Romance is part of a subgroup of the Romance language family called Raeto Romance languages. Raeto meaning the name of the province during the Roman Empire, because of course it's connected to Latin, called Raetia in classical Latin or Rezia in ecclesiastical Latin. But regardless of where it comes from, it's a Gallo Romance language. So let's see immediately how much I can understand. Let's dive into it. Italian Romance Uno In Due, dus, tre, trais, quattro, quattro, cinque, ciun. Did you say ciun for, for five, for cinque? Wow, so this is interesting because one, when he said in, I wouldn't have recognized it. Two and three I did recognize, but three sounded a bit more German to me. If, so, so far, the first impression I'm getting when I'm just hearing the numbers, I might be completely wrong, but the first impression I'm getting is that, okay, it's a Romance language, but I can see a strong influence from German, at least in the pronunciation, from a Italian speaker point of view. Uh, then five completely lost, uh, completely lost me there. Let's continue. Sei. Sis. Sette. Siat. Otto. Och. Siat and och actually do make it sound a bit more like a northern regional language from Italy, a little bit. So there, it's com coming back this side of the of the fence, if you will. Nove. Nov. Dieci. Dies. Yeah, very interesting. So the, the, apart from a few numbers, I, I can see already a little bit of a mixture, as I was saying, between a little bit of German, a little bit of Italian. Let's continue. La tramontana e il sole discutevano un giorno su chi dei due fosse il più forte, quando videro un viandante che passava avvolto in un mantello. In a gas schignavano la rasota del sole, che a niente del stusca se chi il ferm. Qui in con in calmanti e venius nautie. Ok, here I only understood sole, which must mean sun. Uh, of course, the Italian one, <laughs> it's a given. I only understood sun, and then viandant, because it's very similar to viandante, a wanderer. Only two words. Non much. Si misero d'accordo allora che il primo di loro che fosse riuscito a far togliere il mantello di dosso al viandante sarebbe stato ritenuto il più forte. Elt ein Steiperina, che il ferm sei di quel che venite a fare tre ore al viandante si manti. Nothing, just viandant. Nothing, did not understand anything. La tramontana si mise a soffiare con tutta la sua forza, ma più soffiava, più il viandante si avvolgeva nel suo mantello, tanto che alla fine il povero vento lasciò perdere. Laura Zota buffava con tutta forza, aveva più fetti che buffava. Finally, buffava con tutta forza. Buffava can understand because it has nothing to do with the wind blowing in standard Italian, but maybe in some dialects. So that I can recognize. And then I, I did not recognize the name of the wind, but that's okay because it's a specific name. And then con tutta forza sounds just like Italian there, with all of its strength. Um, so, so interesting that it's like, to me, it sounds like a completely foreign language, a little bit reminiscent of German, maybe, and then all of a sudden, boom, you got like one half a sentence and it sounds like Italian. <laughs> wow. A pifet che vien dont se tuiava in si umanti. La finale a Laura Zot, tau si il combat. Allora il sole cominciò a brillare con tutto il suo calore e, immediatamente, il viandante si tolse il mantello. Così la tramontana fu costretta a riconoscere che il sole era più forte di lei. Now I did recognize the word for wind because they said vent, which was in, in standard Italian it's vento, just remove one letter. I mean a lot of northern dialects do that anyway, so should I say regional languages, they just remove the, the final vowel. So I can recognize that, but that was about it. Tal viandant tragiosi umanti. Keu a Laura Zot studa tir cal sole sa gir ferm, da dels dus. Nothing. I, I, maybe now that because I heard of it, I heard it in Italian first, I understand mantello, 
which means like a mantle, a cape in Italian. They say manti, but I wouldn't have recognized it in isolation. So, so far, not so good. Let's see a different video. Hello, you learn Romance and it's wonderful. Today... I love this guy, he's so happy. We deal with compliments. In Romance, compliments, very similar. Repeat, compliments. Compliments. It's so strange, it really does sound like a, like a Romance language word like an Italian, sometimes northern Italian word that is pronounced by a German to me. The Mainz at the end makes it sound a little German. For example, great. Great would be grand, but you can... Yeah, grand sounds very German to me. Not say grand, but you say grandiose. Very grandiose. I wonder if all Romance speakers, we said there aren't many, but I wonder if they all have the uvula R like they have in high German. I'm, my guess is going to be no. This specific guy does. So it's basically the R that they have both in high German and in French. This guy has it. I don't think they all do. And the reason why I'm saying this is because Romance, well, the first written records are from the Middle Ages, but the language itself is, is quite ancient as well. And uh, it, the development of the R, even in French, is, linguistically speaking, very modern. Probably in the areas where they do speak it in Italy, they don't do the R. To, so Grand would become like Grand, I would imagine. Very great. Repeat. Grandiose. Or you can say Grandiose. I could recognize that. Beautiful. Beautiful is bellezza. Seriously. Oh, that is so intriguing. Bellezza, it, it exists in Italian just like that. Even though in Romance, this gentleman is teaching us that it means beautiful, so in its adjectival use, it's an adjective. In Italian, the adjective for beautiful is bellissima. And if you want to say, if you say bellezza, it actually means beauty the noun. If he's gonna put it into a sentence, it's gonna sound so weird to me. Let's go. Add bellezza to any word. For example, una casa bellezzas. This is so intriguing. So he said una, so obviously he has the u that once again is found both in French and in German, but not in Italian. Maybe some dialects in the north, but not in standard. I don't have that sound. I had to learn it. And so he says una, but I can recognize it as una in Italian. Then he says casa, which clearly is, it's, must have the same root as casa, so home. I wonder why the ch. That would be so interesting, intriguing to go and see how that evolved. And then bellezza, he actually uses it as an adjective. So he's saying una casa bellezza to mean a beautiful house. So the adjective is after the noun. In Italian, you could do it both ways. You could say una casa bella, una casa bella, or una casa bellissima, if you want to do it in superlative, I should have said. Or you could say una bella casa. So you can put the adjective before in this case, a little less common in Italian. But we would not say bellezza or bellezzas, like he said, he actually added an S, didn't he? A beautiful house. Or una not bellezzas. You remember? Una not bellezzas. So clearly not means night. In Italian it's notte. I can absolutely recognize it. Once again, in some northern dialects they do say not. So uh, I can see the connection there. And then the way he uses bellezzas, absolutely intriguing. Um, it sounds very, very foreign to me, but I could understand a very simple article, noun, adjective, situation like this. Let's find another video and let's see if we can understand a gentleman who actually doesn't explain, like in this case, but fluently speaks. My name is Daniel Telli, I am a Trin, here in Vich, a confined linguistic, Kurt von Flem. So interesting, so far I'm not understanding anything except for my name is, I understood that, because that sounded similar to Italian. This is, must be one of those people that pronounce it with a trilled R, so I think I was right, because he's, I think he's trilling his R's. It might be, in fact, a speaker of Romance. He says Daniel, I wonder if he's from the north of Italy, or if he's from Switzerland. Regardless, he doesn't seem to have the uvula R. Uh, but what I'm finding interesting is that, once again, I'm not understanding the language. I have no idea what the heck he's saying. But I'm noticing that they have the sh sound that some Portuguese speakers have in either Portugal or in the Carioca accent, as we have seen. So 
there is another interesting connection right there. Um, casa ai din Chanchau um Ramon Chatrin e scola ai pri Sur Silvan am rus pe quel video che di scola ai Sur Silvan forse che ho mitlu in tiki in Ramon Chatrin ia sai ambo. Io sono che si in famiglia da Purs. Um vai faccio la scola a Trin sento che già ho tutto rich. I believe he used the word family and the word school. So far, I'm understanding like a 5%, like a 5%, like almost nothing, maybe 3%. So extremely difficult if compared to the way, as an Italian, how much I can understand from Spanish, for example, Catalan. So far, this is the hardest one ever, uh, even harder than Portuguese for me. Nordistica and English. A while when she had circa 1997. Finally. He said circa, oh, I have something to say about that. You're going to love it. He said circa 1998 or something like that, which means about 1997. I understood that. And when it comes to the way he pronounced this word about. So in Italian, it would be circa. But what I find interesting, he's saying it like a circa. And this is something that happens both in Czech Republic, I believe. That's how they pronounce some seas and in the northeast of Italy. So in Friuli it's not a full-on tz, but sometimes they do have this characteristic. For example, if you say number 555, in standard Italian you would say 555. Now with a southern accent like the one I have, depending on what, which part of the south, it would become 555. It kind of becomes like a sh. But with a northeastern accent like the one my dad has from Friuli, some people say 555. I didn't do it very well because I'm not from there. But the idea that I wanted to communicate is that some speakers of the Furlan accent, which by the way, I've got a dedicated video link in the description, do change the ch sound into a tz sound, 500. And they also do that in Romance. Fascinating. So uh, all in all, uh, in conclusion of this very interesting video, Romance is definitely the hardest for me to understand and even have an idea what the heck they're on about when compared to other romance languages within this series of now I think 19 videos, this is the 19th or 20th, 20th probably if we include the first Swiss, Swiss video made. I understand almost nothing, I can get a few words and when it comes to the pronunciation I think depending on which speaker, sometimes it sounds more German and other times I can see some connection within the Northeast, maybe a little bit of Portuguese and that's about it. I don't understand it. So uh, it's a fascinating language. If you know anyone who speaks it or you have anyone in your family who speaks it, well, let me know. My first impression has some validity. And uh, as always, thank you so much for joining Metatron's Academy.